Alrighty, we're continuing on in Acts. We're in Acts 25, 13 through 27. And here the Apostle Paul is going to get the opportunity to speak before the king. And here we go. 25, 13 through 26. Uh, I'm sorry, 25, 13 through 25, 27. So here we go. A few days later, King Agrippa and Bernice arrived at Caesarea to pay their respects to Festus. Since they were spending many days there, Festus discussed Paul's case with the king. He said, There is a man here whom Felix left as a prisoner. When I went to Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and asked that he be condemned. I told them that it is not the Roman custom to hand over any man before he has faced his accusers and has had an opportunity to defend himself against their charges. When they came here with me, I did not delay the case, but convened the court the next day and ordered the man to be brought in. When his accusers got up to speak, they did not charge him with any of the crimes I had expected. Instead, they had some points of dispute with him about their own religion and about a dead man a uh, dead man named Jesus, whom Paul claimed was alive. I was at a loss how to investigate such matters, so I asked if he would be willing to go to Jerusalem and stand trial there on these charges. When Paul made his appeal to be held over for the emperor's decision, I ordered him to be held until I could send him to Caesar. Then Agrippa said to Festus, I would like to hear this man myself. He replied, Tomorrow you will hear him. The next day, Agrippa and Bernice came with great pomp and entered the audience room with the high-ranking officers and the leading men of the city. At the command of Festus, Paul was brought in. Festus said, King Agrippa and all who are present with us, you see this man. The whole Jewish community has petitioned me about him in Jerusalem and here in Caesarea, shouting that he ought not to live any longer. I found he had done nothing deserving of death, but because he made his appeal to the emperor, I decided to send him to Rome. But I have nothing definite to write to his majesty about him. Therefore, I have brought him before all of you, and especially before you, King Agrippa, so that as a result of this investigation, I may have something to write. For I think it is unreasonable to send on a prisoner without specifying the charges against him. So... Paul now not only gets to speak in front of Festus the governor, but also Agrippa the king. Now, Caesar is the emperor, so it goes emperor, king, governor. Uh, and that's, that's why he's talking to the king and it's still not Caesar, is because they have a, a rank higher than king, which is emperor. So Paul gets the opportunity to be able to speak in front of all of them. Really, really wonderful. Now, uh, Festus is saying some stuff that's not exactly true. He says he was at a loss on how to investigate the stuff. You know, Paul says Jesus is alive. They've got these different disputes. So Festus says he was at a loss on how to investigate these matters. So he asked if he would be willing to go to Jerusalem and stand trial on these charges. Yeah, he wanted to do a favor <laughs> to the Jews, and that's why he was going to send them, uh, send Paul to Jerusalem because the Jews wanted to ambush him. And so, you know, you're getting some truth, but not total truth there. Uh, but let me ask you this question How would you feel if you had the opportunity to share your faith, to share about what God has done for you? in front of a governor and a king. And, and apparently it was quite the, uh, quite the court. A good number of people were there. And, you know, how would you feel if you're in Paul's position? Would you feel intimidated? Would you feel scared? Would you be unsure what to do? Um, but Paul, as we'll find out in tomorrow's devotion, Paul was ready and willing. And this is something that we see uh, Paul describe in Colossians. Just jump to Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6. This is something that uh, Paul told the church in Colossi, Colossi to be ready to do, and he, of course, was ready to do. So this is Paul's words to the church in Colossi. He says, Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message 
so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly, as I should. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. So Paul, a prisoner, is asking them to pray for him, that he'd be given an opportunity to share, and that he would proclaim uh, the gospel clearly, the mystery of Christ clearly. And now he's getting that opportunity, we see in uh, Acts chapter 25, to speak to the governor and the king. Now, I don't know exactly when Colossians was written, if it was before this meeting uh, or after this meeting, but before he talked uh, at Caesar's court, you know, not exactly sure, but he is absolutely ready and willing and having other people pray for him so that he can proclaim the gospel, the mystery of Christ effectively. And I want us, you know, he also told them to, uh, to make the most of every opportunity. And I want us to be ready. You know, let's pray to be ready and have our conversation be full of grace, as Paul wrote to the church in Colossae. You know, be ready and have your conversation full of grace. I think some people are ready, but they're kind of belligerent about their faith and pushy. Um, that's not what is described here, and that's certainly not what we'll read about tomorrow in how Paul presented his case. But let's be ready and make the most of every opportunity. Let's pray about that. So, Heavenly Father, thank you that you give us opportunities to share about you, to serve you in various different ways, even not in evangelistic ways, but also in other ways, just being there for somebody, an encouragement to pray, whatever the case may be. But Lord, help us to be ready uh, and prepared to make the most of every opportunity. That's something you call us to do. And Lord, today we may have an opportunity to make a difference in somebody's life, maybe tomorrow. But Lord, let us be ready and prepared. So guide us in this. In Jesus' name, 